yes, yes, the Lord is blessing us right now, right now, right now. He did wake us up this morning, and he has started us on our way. Hey, listen, the Lord is blessing us right now. You know, we've gone through this uh, frigid weather, uh, and a lot of people have experienced uh, the loss of water uh, and, and, and power during this time. But many of us uh, did not experience that. That's a blessing. And those who did, God has brought them through uh, the, whatever they were going through, loss of water, loss of power. But, but God still is blessing us because you know why? We're still yet here in the land of the living, and that is truly a blessing. Health, strength, right mind, that's a blessing. Food, uh, uh, tables, clothes on our back, a shelter on our head. Listen, so many things we take for granted, many things we take for granted, because, you know, we're so used to having it, so we just take it for granted. But let me tell you something. Don't take God's love for granted, and don't take God for granted, and don't take people for granted, okay? All right, so here we go. Here we go, brothers and sisters. We got Sister Fane here with me tonight. We, we're getting ready for watch night service. We're going to do it uh, virtual here uh, on uh, uh, right here on um uh, our Facebook and YouTube page, and we want to thank Sister Carol for all she does for us and making sure that we get on, and when we're not on, she'll let me know exactly what's going on, Bishop. We're not on yet. But one thing I found tonight is that when we go live, for some reason, we can go on Facebook live before we go live on uh, YouTube Live. So there's a little delay there. So if you get on Facebook, if you live on Facebook, we may already be there. And then the link that we send out each and every week uh, to you about Bible study is like it's a delay before you can get in. So know that you're going to get in, know it's going to happen, but there's a slight delay. Facebook is, is, is there uh, before um, the YouTube channel, but you'll be in on YouTube shortly so just hang on in now with us hang on in now with us hang on in now with us and everything is going to be all right now sister fan how you doing this evening i'm good Bishop. well are you yes all right then you had a merry merry christmas we had a merry merry christmas we enjoyed our family and i spent time with uh uh, with uh, Gail and Carl, my sister and brother-in-law, and my little niece, Neil. <laughs> Lord help us. And uh, and my niece, Carla, and uh, my son, uh, um, Ernest, came by. And then uh, we had Ernest, and then the boys, the grandboys came by. And they're getting men. Ooh, the little, little men. See, I call them men now, right? right. The little men. The little men, they, they came by. And so got a chance to see them and got a chance to uh, spend some time with them until dropped by. And, uh, and uh, her husband, Bunt, and, and her daughter, uh, Jay, they dropped by. Stayed 45 minutes. You know, I got a 45-minute rule here. And then Kim came by. Uh, Kim and Bobby came by and spent a little time with us um, on, on uh, the day before Christmas, and then uh, we had Ricky to, to come by, and my daughter Jonah, she came by, my son Greg, well, he FaceTimed me. But it was just good to have good, good, good family, family time, uh, and spend some precious time with your family members, and I'm glad to see that the Mitchells have made it back uh, from their journey to be with their family all the way in New Jersey and those others who have went away and Brenda and Chris, they, they're doing all right over there. The rights are doing all right. And we're glad to see Dave and, and Rhonda uh, on yesterday. We spent some time together, quality time together, and appreciate them. And again, I want to appreciate all of you, every one of you who showed love, who showed love. You showed love, uh, uh, you showed love to the, um, uh, to the, the, the grandparents, grandparents raising grandkids, you got plenty of uh, clothes, you didn't do toys, some people still slipped a few toys in, but we did we did the, the uh, thing to help grandparents. Grandparents are suffering raising grandkids, and we're gonna continue, we're gonna continue to work with trying to help them uh, during this, this upcoming year that we support grandparents raising grandkids because, you know, we're grandparents. My favorite we're great-grandparents. And uh, so we understand, thank God, that we're not in that situation where we don't have to worry about uh, the kids uh, them and, their, and their kids. But there are many of uh, grandparents that are in that situation where they're having to raise their uh, grandkids uh, like Sister Floyd, one of our members, she's her and Bud Floyd, they're raising their grandkids. But there are many, many people that are in that situ situation that we just thank God that we can be in a position to be able to help people. 
because that's what it's all about. It's all about love and showing love and giving love. And, and that's one thing that I do want to talk about tonight. I'm going to talk about tonight in chapter 13. I, I sent out a, th a thing to you to tell you uh, uh, that we're in chapter 13, 1 through uh, thir verse 13. But we're going to be talking about why does love matter? Why does love matter? Uh, and before we get into that, uh, my sister-in-law, Corinne, before we get into that, and thank you for already sending your donation. We really appreciate that. We ask you to, if you would, if you would send your donations to Liberty, Liberty International. We didn't have service this past Sunday. And, of course, you know, we didn't receive a whole lot, but some people did. But still, the bills go on, as you know. So, Liberty International, Liberty INT Ministry, dot Com, pay, click the PayPal link, send it through PayPal, and thank all of those of you who did send your money, and I appreciate that. Uh, and uh, go out to Zale from your account to the church's account at uh, Liberty Church 1362 at gmail.com, or you can mail it to the church at 1362 Metropolitan Parkway in the lovely city of Atlanta, Georgia, 30310. Or you can drop it by the office. Now, we'll be closed Friday. We'll be closed Monday. We'll be back on regular scheduling operation after Monday, uh, back to our Monday through Friday dates, okay, and time. But you can do it on Friday from 9 until 12 and Mondays from 9 until 3. Okay, may God continue to bless you and keep you is. I pray it was good here tonight from Sister, uh, earlier today from Sister Karen Heard. We're keeping you in our prayers for the Heard, but we know God is able to see you through uh, what you're going through at this time of being lonely because Christmas time brings a time of loneliness when you've lost loved ones and, 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 and you, you know, that time of, but let me just let you know that God is not forsaking you. He's not left you. He's with you and he's always be with you, all right? Because he promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. Jesus said, I will be with you always, even until the end. Even until the end. So, trust in him and everything will be all right. Well, you see, I'm at the kitchen table. I'm at the kitchen table uh, tonight and Sister Fan is here with me. And, uh, of course, I, I, I want to just share something tonight. Uh, in chapter 13, you know, we've been talking about Corinthians and Corinthians, what Paul started off with the Corinthian people because of what was happening with them and how they were getting off track, like we are today, off track. <laughs> we're going after every wind of doctrine as, a, as opposed to accepting Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and practicing the concepts and the precepts of Jesus Christ, which one of his major concepts that he taught us was is to love you one another as I have loved you. Right? That's what Jesus told us. He said, love you one another as I have loved you. And tonight, Paul is going to talk about that. Last week, we talked about the gifts of the Spirit and the spiritual gifts. And some of you learned that you do have spiritual gifts. You know, you have the gift of helps. You have the gift of healing. You have the gift of prophecy. You have the gift of speaking in tongues. You have many of these gifts, the apostles' gift, the teachers' gift, the pastors' gift, those different gifts of the Spirit, right? Those are gifts. But tonight, Paul is going to talk about the greatest gift that you can have, which is love. Now, in the, in chapters 13, we're going to break it down in three parts. One through three, verses one through three, is going to talk about love alone authenticates spiritual people. Love alone authenticates spiritual people, Right? Then four through seven deals with love control the thoughts and the actions of spiritual people. And then eight through 13, love is eternal and complete. And while grace is only temporal. So we're going to be talking about that in, the, in that vein. So what Sister Fanny is going to do is we're going to start reading. She's going to start reading verses one and as she's reading verse one and she'll start in one and we'll go from one to uh three this is fanny we'll stop at three and then we'll we'll break that down okay, okay. all right so sister fan is going to start reading now at verse one. First corinthians 13 and one if i speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. All right. Read. 
If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. Now, put yourself in, in what Paul is saying. Paul is speaking in the first person, talking about himself. He said, if I, go on, read. If I give all possess, all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Paul is clearly sharing something with us. It, as he talks about himself, and he's talking to his one that he is teaching, the one that he has shared in the church that he had established. And he's sharing him, sharing all these things with him. He said, listen, guys, I want you to understand, if you have all of these things, if you are, uh, 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 you think that, you know, you, you know, you can prophesize, you got all these gifts, you give to the poor and you do all these things, but what, why are you doing it? Are you doing it out of love? Or are you doing it out of self-grandizement? Or are you doing it for praise for man? Say that again. Are you doing it out of love? And are you doing it out of self-grandizement? Or are you doing it for praise for man? That's what Paul is saying here. Clearly, I want to talk about why love matters. Why love matters as we deal with these scriptures. There are, and my wife is going to chuckle. Can I fry an egg? If I don't have an egg, can I drink a glass of milk if I don't have milk? So can you have, do all of these things if you don't have love? See, the basic principle of being a believer is love. Jesus teaches us to love you one another as I have what? Love you. Not to get caught up on things, not to get caught up on your education, or your abilities to do certain things because it's not because of you it's because of him and he teaches us that what he gives us we are to share it with others in what love mm -hmm. in love satan has gotten us so messed up even the clergy is so messed up about uh, hating and jealousy and envy and selfishness and greed that we're so messed up and caught up in these attributes or characteristics of Satan, we forgot what the basic principle of Jesus and what he came into the world to show us but love. We've forgotten about that because we are moved to satisfaction of satisfying the flesh, the lust of the flesh. And that's what Satan, that's how he got Adam and Eve. Satisfying what? The lust of the flesh. That's how they fell from, uh, from grace uh, uh, because of what? The lust of the flesh. And if we continue to go down this road, then we will continue to see what we see. Well, people are saying, well, someone's killing. Why wow, someone's killing? Because there's no love. Because the, the, the teaching of Christ is not being taught. The message of Christ of teaching love is not there. Then we'll have to use the egg. And the milk, that was an analogy to show that you can't do these things. You, you can't legislate love. <laughs> you can't dictate love. Love has to come from within. It has to come because you are what? Spiritual, a spiritual person. Because you are a spiritual person. I'm going to say that again. A spiritual person. Because you've been born again, and if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then if you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, then you accept the characteristics and the attributes of Jesus Christ. And that's the love. Mm -hmm. So that's a missing link in our society today that there is little to no, and I'm going to say it like this, little to no love because people try to, show who they are and how they can preach and how they can teach and how they can sing and how they can build uh, great bonds and, and get more money and all of that. But do, do you remember the scripture when he said to the to the man who gave the great harvest that time and he had blessed bountifully <laughs> and, and, and the man got within himself because he got selfish and thought about himself and himself only? God didn't give it to him just for himself and himself only. That's why he said when he gave the declaration that I'm going to tear down these bonds, these old bonds, and I'm going to build me some new bonds, and then I'm going to sit back, eat, drink, and be merry. 
God said, well, for your soul is going to be required. He said, your soul. See, that's a missing link to him. People don't focus on the soul. He keeps talking about the soul of man. He keeps talking about the, he's coming back for the soul of man, not the things of man, but the soul of man. So here he is. Paul is trying to get them to understand that I, though I can do all these things, and though I have these gifts, I if I don't have love, and I want you to read that again, and, and this the uh, the first one, read the first one again. I'm go back to number one so you can read that again. I want you to read number one again. Read that again. <laughs> not number one. I'm, it's not. Number, I went to twelve. Then I want mm -hmm. thirteen. I'm sorry. I'll go back down to thirteen. Let me get down to thirteen. Thirteen or one. Thirteen or one. There you go. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. I mean, you're just making noise. You're just making noise. You, you really ain't doing nothing. God see, God sitting up high and looking down low, and he said, you just perpetrating a fraud. Mm. you just perpetrating a fraud. And God is not going to accept that into his kingdom. That's why he kicked Satan out. Why you think you're going to let Satan imps in? If you're going to be one of Satan imps, you think you're going to get in? <laughs> if he kicks Satan out, you think you're going to be one of his imps and you can fool God? And, and you're going to get in when he's sitting and looking at how you what you're really doing? Okay, well, you're a philanthropist. You got money, so you can give money. But you give money not because it's really to help people because you're doing it out of love, but you're doing it because why? If I give this money, I can use it as a tax write-off. If I give this, I can use this as a, a way to get more money. So, or save money. Your money perish with you. All right, Sister Fanny is going to read uh, now 4 through 7, which is going to deal with love. It controls the thoughts and actions of spiritual people. Love does. Love does. It controls your thoughts and your actions. If that was love, do you think a person would pick up a gun and just shoot somebody down? Young people don't know about love. See, they don't know about love. That's why they, you know, they first thing, their first thought is shoot. Their first thought is kill. Their first thought is to harm somebody. That's their first thought because they don't know about Christ and Christ teaching about love because you're teaching them about the ways of the world, about how to get money, how to get rich, how to have the bling bling and the bling bling and the cheese or whatever they're calling it now. That's what you're teaching about. So they don't know about Christ. Have we forgotten about Christ? Or we haven't, or has Christ no longer effect in effect? Well, we know that he is. We need him because he's the, he's the missing ingredients uh, in this whole thing, the message of love. All right, so Sister Fanny's going to read. We're going to move on down to verse number four. She's going to start at four. All right. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. Listen. It's not proud. Listen, listen. Say, read that again. It takes, it takes time to just read it. Slow it down. Love is one. Love is patient. Love is one. It's patient. It's patient. Because when you love, you don't you don't immediately jump out on with anger. You don't immediately jump out with, you know, disgust. You don't these things you don't do that because love is what? Patient. All right, go. Read. Love is kind. Love is kind. Love love is kind and gentle. Love, that's what love is. Uh, love look beyond our faults and see our need. That's what God did. He looked, he looked beyond our faults and he saw our needs. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die for our sin. Do you know what he said, Carol? He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him. And he said, Christian, no, and I keep telling you that. He said, whosoever well, believe in him shall not perish but have what? everlasting life because love is about eternal life love is about eternal life and we'll get to that when we get down to eight and uh and eight thirty eight and thirteen all right read on it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud all right, love ain't proud. Love don't go around boasting. Love don't go around here being envious of people talk, uh, uh, because they got this, they got that. They, we ain't envious. We uh, we love. We don't love. We love one another. We ain't envious. We ain't boasting. We we just love because we're doing what we do out of what love. All right. So I'm trying to see. Uh, I'm looking for 
who's on, because you know I like to call people name, and I can't find it, sister fan. Let me see. Okay, I got it now. All right. So, all right. There's Mother Moses there. Sister Floyd is there. Uh, and Sister Renee. Sister Renee Kato. Michelle is there. And Val is there. And my auntie is here. Brenda's here. Uh, Tanya Carmichael, Wanda. And Lee Sharp is with us tonight. And always Erica. Erica is with us. And uh, Sister Cooper, Rhonda. Cooper is with us tonight, and Brother Dave, he's here with us too tonight, amen. So, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, love does not boast. Uh, it don't run around being proud, it's not proud, run around talking about what I got and what I'm doing and all of this, and, uh, anyway. See, you know, I, I've, I've shared this, and we, the Bible said tonight may be a little bit longer, 13 chapter, but I, I, I feel something here, my shining eyes, as the pastor would say, my shining eyes, I feel something here. Because what, what we have here is, we too busy trying to bring people in the building, filling up the pews or the chairs. That's what we too busy trying to fill up pews and chairs. I'm saying some preachers, not all preachers. See, people look down on preachers don't have a whole lot of folk sitting up in the church because that church ain't it ain't doing nothing. The message ain't resonating. It ain't it ain't. But but the church is supposed to be about discipleship, bringing people to Christ. So when people leave there, they go out and with that same message and same spirit of love and showing people how to love, teaching their kids how to love, teaching their family members how to love because. They'll know us because of our love if we really love God, if we really love Jesus, and we live in our, his commandment is to love you one another as I have loved you. Love you one another, that's the last thing he said. He said, I leave this commandment with you, the love. Paul understood that. He's teaching that because these people are caught up now on who's the greatest. I'm the this, I'm the that. I speak in tongue. I prophesize. I'm this, I'm that. I'm, I'm, I'm beating their chest. And you know we got some um, um, ums around here. Some of y'all may be some um, um, ums. What I'm doing, what I got, what I'm going to get, how I'm going to have. You can only have what God gives you and what God wants you to have. And then you got to give him the glory and thank him. But you got to do it in what? Love. All right, Sister Fan is going to read now. Read on. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. That's what love does. Love, look, look, look here. That's what God does. That's what you want God to do for you. You don't want him to keep no record of your wrongdoing because we all done done something wrong. If you're telling you ain't never did nothing wrong, you did tell, you done did something wrong, then you done lied. We all done done something wrong. We all have dishonored others. We all have been self-seeking. We all have gotten angry. But love does not keep a record of our wrongdoing. And that's what we're supposed to do. Because now we're in Christ, we're supposed to be practicing this. We're supposed to be living like this. Not dishonoring others and not seeking self gratification, not easily getting angry and upset and want to beat on that table. And it doesn't keep records of wrongdoing. I don't keep records of the past, your past, your past, your past, your past. Your past is your past. Your present is now. So I, I can't hold your past against you. I, I don't hold anybody past against you because I got a past too. So why should I'm going to hold your past against you when I got a past? We all got a past. We do. But we don't keep a record, a scorecard of who doing this and who doing that. Read. Or did this and did that. Go on. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. That's what love does. Love rejoices in the truth. It doesn't get caught up in evil. It real for real, real for real, real for real, real for real. You did me wrong, so I'm going to do you wrong. You did this to me, I'm going to do this to you. The late Jimmy, Jimmy Cagney, and I'm going to predate myself, and uh, some of y'all going with me on this because you know about it, Mr. Robbins. The late Jimmy Cagney said this in a movie, in a gangster movie. He said, you did it to my brother. And my brother did it to your brother, and now I'm going to do it to you. <laughs> because it was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Right? That's what he, they practice. But love doesn't rejoice in delight in evil, but love rejoices in the truth. Love wants to deal with what is right, what is right and pleasing in the sight of God. Read. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Because persevere, persevere, persevere. Because why? 
because love controls our thoughts and our actions of spiritual people. I'm gonna go back. We're gonna go back and read this again because I, I this got a simile. This got a simile. You know, it's got a simile because you know what I'm saying it. But this got a simile. I want this a simile tonight because we're gonna go into a new year. And we can't go into the new year carrying old luggage. We can't go in the new year dealing with old things. We can't go in the new year trying to fire egg and we ain't got an egg. We can't go in the new year trying to drink milk and we ain't got no milk. Can't do it. We got to go in the new year with love. Love in our heart for our fellow man. Love in our heart for not just for ourselves and our little me, mine, mine, but love for mankind. When we talked about the spiritual gifts of helps, the spiritual gifts of helps, which we know that Ron Cooper had that gift, the spiritual gift of helps, you believe in heaven, and there are others that believe in heaven. But, but I mean, the reality of it is, is that that's love. Utilizing that gift of love, looking out for the least, not looking for any gratification, not looking for any reward, not looking for any praise, even though I'm talking about it, but not looking for any praise, but just doing it because it's the right thing to do. Helping people. Helping people. Because you know what? When you're really helping people, you're really helping yourself. When people ask me, they say, why you like doing that? When I was in the union, now, why you like doing that? I mean, you don't get nothing out of it. What I got out was the joy of knowing I was in a position to be able to help people that couldn't help themselves. Help people keep their jobs who otherwise would lose them. Or people who had been treated unfairly being treated fairly. That's what I got out of it. it. It did something on the inside for me. It made me feel good that I was able to help. Because that's what love does. Love doesn't look for no inner reward. Love doesn't look for nobody patting you on the back. Love just do what love does. All right? And that's how we know that people are spiritual because of them showing their love in action. All right, number eight. Love never fails, but where there are prophecy, prophesies, is that what that's prophecies, prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Well, Paul is telling you this. He's declaring something here, brothers and sisters. He's declaring something here. These gifts that we have, that God has given us for us to use for him, preachers, teachers, apostles, laying on the hands, healing the sick, those gifts of things that we have. He said, those things, are they're going to fail. You know why they're going to fail and tongues are going to cease? And all this the knowledge that you have, you're so smart, you know everything. <laughs> you know why? Because one day you're going to pass away. And when you pass away, guess what? These gifts go with you. But where are you going to go? Where's your soul going to go? Where is your soul going to go? I I was thinking just today, um, Mr. Robinson, I was just thinking just today. I'm talking to my assistant pastor now. I was just thinking just today. I said, I would love to draw a diagram and show the depiction of because see most people are visual, you know when you're talking about it they don't they don't really see it, but when you show them a visual, they kind of get it, right? And I was just thinking I was saying that if I could just if I was an artist if I could just draw a picture of God creating man and then breathing into man's nostril and then a lifeless being lifeless, made out of clay, a lifeless being, once he breathed into that nostril, then man became a living soul. If I could just, you know, do that, if I had that kind of talent or that, that gift, brother, to do that, but I don't. And then come back and draw that same picture of that man that has that so in him and then God coming back and taking it and that same lifeless soul that God breathed the breath of life into 
He came back and he took that breath and that same individual now is like he was from the very beginning, lifeless, mm. just a shell because God took his soul back with him. If I could just draw that, people would just see that and understand that that's what's going to happen because we're going to pass away. And he's coming back and he's going to get that soul. And all those gifts, all those talents, all those things, they're going to be passed away. Because love is eternal. And it is complete. While grace is only temporal. We're only temporal, people. We're only temporal. We're only here for a little while. We don't know. But are we preparing for, for the inevitable? The most precious gift that you and I have is our soul. And the thing that we protect the least is our soul because we let the flesh take control like Adam and Eve did in the garden. I used this analogy years and years ago. You said a lot. Life is like a supermarket. And I'm going to use this, this analogy because a lot of people go to Wilder World. And when you go to Wilder World, that, oh man, there's plenty of stuff on Wilder World. You got food, you got clothes, you got electronics, you got toys, you got drugs. You, I mean, you just got garden stuff. You just got all kinds of stuff. You just you walk down many aisles, all the aisles you want to walk down in many things, you can just fill your buggy up with anything in that store. They don't care. You can come up there with four or five buggies. Ten buckets. But when you get to that cash register, you have to pay for everything that you've taken out of that store. And that's life. That's life. You can do it. God has given us free charge. You can do anything you want to do. That's up to you. But you're going to have to pay in the end. <laughs> and are you going to be willing to pay the price of heaven and hell? See, that's another depiction that, that they used to show of people roasting in hell. See, young people don't, you know, they don't see all of that. And we don't talk about that. We don't talk about heaven and hell. We just talk about what we can gain here on earth. And the word said, what does the profit of man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What does it? What does it? What do, what do, you, what do, you, what do you gain? You gain the whole world and, and you just lose what's the most precious thing you have is your soul. You gain the whole world. You got the whole world. But you, you lose your, your soul. All right, so this is Van going to read nine. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. All that you think that you know, you just know half of the story. <laughs> you don't even know half of the story. You just know what you know, and you don't know all you need to know. And many times you've forgotten what you need to know because you've started acting on stuff that's not going to be beneficial for you in the end. You're just only trying to satisfy the flush. And the more we try to satisfy the flush, the more we lose out. The more we try to satisfy the flush, the more we lose out. If we read our Bibles and we go back and we look at great, so-called great kings and the great kings and all that they conquered and all they had, and in the end, the great kings had to die, what did they gain? I read something the other day. I don't know who sent it to me. I don't know who sent it to me. But he said, this is what he said. He said, men, no matter what you do, men will soon forget you. Men will soon forget everything that you have done to help. And I thought about that. I said, are you doing it for men or are you doing it for God? Because men are going to forget, but he ain't going to forget everything that you have done for him 
the thing that you do for man, man will forget. Man will not even appreciate what you do. They will act like they appreciate it, but they really don't appreciate it because their actions will dictate to you that they don't appreciate it. What, what God is saying was saying that, that in that quote, that's what they were saying was, man will soon forget, but God won't forget. He won't forget. So where, where are you now as we're talking about love, 8 to 13, we're talking about love is eternal and complete by grace is temporal. Have you begin to think about where you are? I said at the beginning, put yourself in this lesson tonight. Why does love matter? Because it matters to God. Because God, if he didn't love us, he could have destroyed us. He would, he would have destroyed us. He wouldn't have sent Jesus in the world to die for our sin if he didn't love us. The basic principle of God and Jesus is love. It's love. God loved. He sent Jesus. Jesus loved and he died. <laughs> but we don't want to love. But we want to say that we are part of the body of Christ. The body of Christ, the, the main ingredients to the body of Christ is love. Brother Dave, the main ingredients to the body of Christ is love. That's the main ingredients is love. You must love. You have to love. And love in spite of, not because of. Mm. All right, Sister Fan is going to read the next one. Read. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. So when the completeness comes, what's in part will disappear. It's gone. It's gone. Because when is the completeness going to come? going to come when we stand before him. And that was in part that you thought you know, you thought you were doing it. You thought you you know, you know, had it going on. Because people say, man, you got it going on. Boy, you really got it going on. Oh, you, you to catch me out. You to this. You to that. Look at what you riding in. Look at how you living. Look at this and look at that. And you just think, well, I, I really got it going on. But that that you think you know in part will soon disappear because then you will know the complete story when you stand before him. That's what Paul is talking about. Read. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. And 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 that's what Paul is talking about. Paul said, <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about a little bit about Paul. Paul said when he was a child, he thought like a child. He thought going and being popular, <laughs> getting with the great teachers and and sitting down with the so-called leaders, the people who had the power, <laughs> the politicians, the people who he thought that could help influence his career to make him somebody because he thought that would elevate him to a higher status before man. He said, but when I was, I was a child, I thought like a child because when, before we find Christ, what we are, what babes, mm -hmm. we're like children. He said, but when I became a man, when I accepted Christ, break it down, Bishop. When I accepted Christ, I put away my childish ways. I put those things away trying to be accepted by the world and trying to prove a point to the world. I am in him and he is in me and I'm living for him and I am in love. I love God and God loves me. I love Christ. Christ loves me. And guess what? I love you. That's why I'm teaching you and I'm telling you and as I always say, I love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all. So Paul is saying the same thing to us tonight. He's telling us, I once was a child. I once thought I was, you know, Mr. Big Stuff. Because I was hobnobbing with certain people, and certain people knew me, and I knew how to throw out certain names. Mm -hmm. They even gave me a letter to... The, 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 the legitimate me. <laughs> but when I met Christ, <laughs> but when I met Christ on that Damascus road, when he knocked me off of that beast, 
Mm. When he blinded me physically, physically blinded me and led me to Ananias house. And Ananias put that salve on my eyes and I began to not only see physically, but I began to see spiritually. Because again, spiritual love is internal, eternal, and grace is temporal. That temporal praise that people are praising you, they calling your name. You are this and you are that. There are people who are gone on the glory that we don't we don't forget all about them. We don't forget all about them, but God hadn't. If the work that they did and the love that they showed, and they did it in love, God granted them what God promised them, a home in eternity, mm -hmm. like he's promising it to you and to I. Read 12. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. He said, okay. See, we, 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 we just think we know. We don't know. But when we see him face to face, <laughs> we going to know. We going we gonna to really, really know. When we see him face to face, we'll really know. Then and only then will we really, really know. It, the question is, is, why does love matter? If you have love, the love of Christ, and you exemplify the love of Christ, he said, that love I command you, do unto the least of them, whatever you do unto the least of them, you do unto me, because I love you first. You love me. If you love me, then do what I say. That's what he said. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's a heaven or a hell. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That's what some of you are saying. I don't know. And you're teaching your children. You ain't sharing with them. I don't know. They, you, you can't answer certain questions to them. See, the, the thing of it is, it, it ain't for you to know now. <laughs> it's only for you to believe. Because you will know one day. That's, that's for sure. Nobody came here has ever stayed here forever. Nobody. I don't know anybody that can tell you that somebody who came here, I know people talk about red coordination and all that, but nobody can tell you that somebody came here that's been here and has been here forever. Because we all have a day and a destiny to meet our creator. Mm. Read. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. He said, you got to have faith, you got to have hope. But he said, the main thing is love. The main ingredients is love. Uh -huh. Well, brothers and sisters, I, I wanted to share tonight with you this lesson, as we have talked about spiritual gifts, the missing ingredient in our society today is love. When we come back to God in true love, and when we begin to love our brothers and sisters as ourselves, and we begin as ministers, as believers, not just the ministers, not just the pastors, not just the evangelists, not just the prophets, not just the teachers, but the believers, come together on one accord and begin not to be afraid to show love and not to be afraid to teach love. For God is love. And I know I've said it once, I said it twice, I'm going to be redundant until somebody get it. For God is love. John clearly tells us this. For God so loved the world that he gave and he gave and he gave his only begotten son.
that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have ever, ever lasting life with him in eternity. If that's your desire, if that's truly what you want to do, and you're for real about it, you know, some people talk a good game, but they really ain't for real. But if they're, you're really for real about it, and that's really what you want to do, not just because you done got sick, now you want to, you know, get real, not just because you you need some money, you want to get real, uh, you're about to be set out, though, you want to get real, you need him to, now because you need a blessing, you need for him to come and see about you. Yeah. You know, that... That right there ain't nothing but straight out pimping. You use him, and then after he has done what you need him to do, then you don't need him no more. Well, if you're true to God, God will be true to you. If you love him, and if you love your brothers and sisters, if you treat your fellow man with love, regardless how they treat you, regardless how they treat you, because you can't control how somebody treats you, but you certainly can control how you treat somebody else. You can do that. You can do that. You can do that. You don't have to get angry. You don't have to get upset. Let them be angry. Let them be upset. That's on them. But you don't have to. And you don't have to hate. But you can, and you should, do as Christ told us to do. And as God has done, love, as God loved, love, as Christ loved. As we go into the new year, that's our message, the message of love. Why loves matter. Love is the glue that keeps us together. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm going to give you a minute here. Somebody may want to call and just say, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. We will be doing uh, watch night service starting at 11 o'clock virtual here. Uh, love to have you on. Share with your family and friends so they can get on. Uh, if you want to call, if you got something you want to say, I'm going to give you a few minutes here to do that. 404 404-308-0795. 404-308-0795. 4430 I know there's a little delay between what I say and your call, so I'm going to give you a few minutes. We can't look at the politicians uh, to, to uh, legislate love. Sure. We can't. We can't look at the police officers and the firefighters. To, they need to understand what love is, too. The love of Christ, the love that Christ gives, the compassion that God gives. When God wakes you up every morning, he's showering you with love. When he wakes you up every morning, he showers you with love. He allows you to see another day because he loves you and he wants you to come and be with him in eternity. And he gives you another opportunity to get it right. To get it right. Well, as I'm giving you an opportunity to call, I know somebody going to call, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my assistant pastor, and and then I'm going to hear from her uh, tonight um, if I can find a number. <laughs> oh, mm, I don't know. It. Ain't that a shame? Six, five, nine, three, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I don't know. Messed up. <laughs> oh, I messed up. I, I put the wrong thing in there and I can't delete it. <laughs> well, I, okay, that brother Dave is. Brother Dave? Brother David Cooper, where's he at? Uh, let me see, where's David Cooper, Dave J. Cole? La, 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 la. Uh. Mm. No, uh. That Dave is. 
Yeah, Dave. Yeah, if I was doing any better, Dave, I'd be doing great. But y'all ain't doing great with it. I can see your bishop. Appreciate, appreciate you. I just want to say appreciate you again. Well, you know, Dave, I, I, it love is love is is an action word. It's shown. It ain't just talked about. And I know you love me. Uh, you know, I know you do. And I know many of y'all love me. Many of y'all do because you show it. So I appreciate it. And I just wanted, I just want us to next, go into next year uh, as a church family with an understanding it's all about love. Amen. And we just got it. We, if, if, we, if we're the only light on the hill, and we won't be the only light on the hill because there are others who will be doing the same thing. But that's what we got to do is we got to, we have to teach it. We have to talk about it. Not one time, but all the time. It's got to be redundant. It's got to be so that, just like what mom and them used to tell us the same thing over and over. Yeah, uh, hard hair make a soft, you know what. And an empty wagon make a lot of, and you know what. I mean, they used to say the same thing over and over again. And we used to say, I don't know what I'm talking about. But, but now we get it because of their redundancy and what they said to us over and over again. And that's what we got to do. And, and believers, we got to say it over and over again. And I know I'm preaching or saying this to the choir because that's what you do anyway. <laughs> but but I thank you so much for calling. Tell Miss Cooper, thank you. Uh, tell Khalif that uh, I'll talk to him later. All right, Bishop. We all, right all say it together. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's the Coopers there, the Coopers there. Well, I thank God for you. I was, I'm going to call uh, Mr. Robinson now and see if I can get her on the phone tonight. Uh, uh, oh, oh, that ain't her number. I done dialed the wrong number. Mm. Somebody else will be picking up the phone saying, you have the wrong number. Well, hi, and what are you, uh, Minister Robinson? I'm blessed, Bishop, and highly favored. How are you, as First Lady? Well, we are in love. We, we're teaching love. We're about love. We, it's all about love, the love of Christ, and the love of our man. I understand that. I'm in love with Jesus, and he's in love with me. Woo! Watch yourself. Watch yourself. We're going to have to sing that <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it's all about, love, Bishop. You just have to love people in spite of God. God loved us, not because of, but in spite of. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. And I thank him for that. Happy to see uh, Christmas come and go. I'm still here, closing my right mind, and able to take care of myself and keep a roof over my head and just for all his blessings and all of his benefits. I just thank him for it. All right, all right, all right. Well, watch night, I'm going to have people call in and get their testimony on the phone, so... For those who are listening, just get your testimony, your your uh, your testimony, or uh, I ain't gonna say your resolution, uh, but just <laughs> call in with your testimony. That's right, just do the testimony. <laughs> All right, then. Love you now. Uh, also, are we mm. having service Sunday morning? We in, are having in, service in, Sunday morning. In the building? We're having service okay. Sunday morning. We'll be in church Sunday morning. We'll have watch night Sunday, uh, Saturday night, and we'll be in church first Sunday. First Sunday, you know, we're gonna be in church first Sunday of the year. Yeah, Absolutely. I know we're going to be there. If it's snow, we're going to have to get a player or something and come on up in there. Well, if it if it's snow, if it's snow, we're going to ask the Lord to hold back the white dust so we can come in on the first year of the year having first Sunday, Sunday, in, the Sunday, Sunday, That's first right. Sunday in the new year. All right. Our thank, millions didn't make it, Bishop, but, but, but I thank God I'm one of the ones well, that yeah, made it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so, so much, far, uh, Pastor. So Sister Pastor, thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Thank right. you, First Lady. Love y'all. Love, Love you too, you too. now. Right, bye -bye. It ain't nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> I tell you, those folks are living in a nice or something. Else. Well, listen, I tell you what we're going to do now. We're going to ask you if you would uh, make a liberal donation, help us out at the church. Go out to Liberty, INT Ministry, click the PayPal link, and. Uh, 
whatever God lay upon your heart to do, just do it. Uh, and or you can go out to Zale from your bank account to the Church of Bank account and go out to Liberty Church 1362 at gmail.com or you can mail it directly to the church at 1362 Metropolitan Parkway in the lovely city of Atlanta, Georgia, 30310. Or you can drop it by the church, the office of Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, 9 until 3, and on Friday, 9 until 12. Now, the office hours will, office will be closed Friday, this Friday, and Monday will open back up on the, the 3rd. Well, God bless you and have a smile upon you. And you have a happy, blessed, and always a safe week. And don't forget the message of love. You've been, you've been good to me. I was sitting over there thinking, looking over my life. And Lord, you. You've been good to me, yes When I was down